What we're going to do now is use the Easy Setup Assistant to make sure that our payroll will run correctly. In order to do that, we need to go to Setup at the top of the screen and use the Easy Setup Assistant, which will bring up the areas that we can customise for our uh, usage, and we click on Payroll. It then takes me into the section of setting it up, and on the left-hand side, it will give me a list of the things I need to think about when I'm setting up. If I click the next button, it then says the first thing I must do is load the tax tables. If I click on load tax tables, it will load them and it tells me here that the creation date of the tax tables I have loaded is currently the tables dated the 1st of July 2012, which will be valid under current legislation to the 30th of June 2013. If there are any changes to be made for the following tax year, new tax tables will become available. If I'm setting up after the 30th of June 2013 and it tells me my tax tables are July 2012, I would need to check for updates. If I click on this button, check for updates, if I'm connected to MYOB and I've paid for my uh, uh, ongoing subscription for maintenance, then I'll have access to the new tax tables for a later year. If I click Next, it will take me on and say, which is your current payroll year? The current payroll year is the 2012-2013 payroll year because I'm setting this up in November 2012. If it was after June 2013, the current payroll year would be 2014. It would be the 2013-2014 payroll year. At the end of June 2013, I will need to roll my payroll forward, but that is a subject of another seminar. If I click Next, it's going to ask me to confirm the payroll year is correct, 2013, yes. And because it's correct, I'll click Next again. Under the current Fair Work legislation, the normal working week for most people is going to be 38. The default here is 40. I'll need to change that. To 38. It then asks me if I have a default payer number. Because I've got an ABN, the tax office is quite happy for me to use the ABN rather than a withholding payer number. I don't need to use it. The superannuation fund that will be used and the default superannuation fund, I will need to set it up and I will use that fund as a default for all my superannuation contributions for all my employees unless the employee wishes me to pay to a fund of his choice in which case he must fill out a form give me some certain information and then I'll be required to uh, pay to that fund. The default superannuation fund that's already been set up if I click on the down arrow will come up as Spectrum Super. I'll use that fund. Click use fund and the default superannuation fund will now be Spectrum Super. The next question it asks is if I would like to round the net pay down to a multiple of a value you specify. For example, five cents. I'm not aware of many people that still pay their payrolls in cash, but if you were to pay your payroll in cash, then the lowest coin you can give them is a five cent piece. Would you round it down or round it up? Your choice. I'll default past it because I will pay all my people electronically. Click Next. It then asks me for the linked accounts for my payroll transactions. The account for cash payments, 11120, is a payroll check account. The account for check payments, if I pay people by check, will be 11110. And the account for electronic payments, the normal electronic clearing account, 11190. It then asks me for the expense account, which will most often be used for employer expenses and currently is set for 65150, other employer expenses. If I'm happy to leave it there, I will, but I would not probably use it. I would normally have a specific account that I'm going to put the various expenses associated with my payroll against that. It also asks me the expense account for which I will track the wages that are paid. If most of my wages will go in office staff, then 65130, the account will appear 
in the bottom half of the profit and loss account in the overheads, that's fine. But if I was using labour as part of preparing the jobs for sale, then maybe I would want to have a wages account that was up in the uh, cost of sales account, a five number. In which case I would change it to the one that is most common. Which liability account do you plan to use most often for deductions and expenses? And it defaults to a payroll accruals payable account. Although I've got it set up for that, when it comes to deducting the PAYG from an employee's pay, I'll put that to a tax or a PAYG payable account. Likewise, the superannuation that's payable will go to a superannuation payable account. Although I'll leave those at the moment, when I set up the actual deductions, I'll make sure that I've got them set to the correct uh, liability account. Click Next. It then asks me to re review my payroll categories. These are the ones that I can actually pay people by. The payroll categories are the various groupings which include the two must-haves, the base hourly and the base salary, but it also has set up by default things like a bonus and a commission and the holiday pay. And if I scroll down, I'll find in there that I've got sick pay. The current terminology for sick pay is now personal and carer's leave, so I might want to edit that title. If I click on sick pay and then click edit wage further down, it then lets me get into the wages name, sick pay, and I can change that to personal and carer's leave. And having changed the title to personal and carer's leave, I can see that it's the normal pay rate, the regular rate multiplied by one. If I was setting one up with a separate account that I might want to record unusual wage expenses in, I can override by clicking in the optional account box, etc. And I click OK. It takes me back and I've now changed it to personal and carer's leave. If I had an item that was occasionally paid, such as overtime, at say four times the normal rate for working on a public holiday, which is also a Sunday, depends upon the awards under which you care, you can always add a new wage category. That's the only one I wish to change at this stage, so now I'll move on to the next page and it asks me for my employee list. This I will handle when I do the payroll. We'll go through and do it later. Click next again and decide if I'll use timesheets. I will use timesheets for time billing and payroll, so I will click the button and my week starts on a Monday. It's a system-wide preference setting. Click next and I've got to the end of setting up the payroll. Having done all that, I can now click Close, and it takes me back to the Easy Setup Assistant, click Close, and I'm back at the Command Centre. 